and you'll see the green arrow at the bottom. Um, click on the green arrow and drag it to the task that you're defining precedence for. In this, and in this example, our entire container will run before script task 2 executes. And the benefit of this is um, we allow script task 1 and our script task and script task run 1 to run in parallel before our other precedence constraints in this package um, execute. So what if we wanted script task 2, 3, and we'll drag a fourth into our package to also run in parallel. We can eliminate the, eliminate the precedence constraints between them, drag one more sequence container in here, move our script tasks inside the container, oh, that's too small, and define precedence between the containers. Now, you can do this all without using containers. However, I created a bad example of what this would look like if you wanted to define the same parallelism without using a sequence container in a separate package. I called it the bad example package. So I'll open that up, and you can see it's a mess. And anybody reusing this package is going to have a great difficulty knowing what's going on in here. So don't do that. Don't be that guy. Um, this is a lot cleaner, easier to read, and provides the same functionality. The next container we're going to cover is the for loop. So first, I'll drag a for loop into the control flow. Going to make it a little bigger here so we can put some tasks in there. And I'll double click on the container to bring up the editor. In the properties window, you can see we have three expressions here the init expression, which is the initial expression, the evaluation expression, which is the tr true false expression and the assign expression. The assign expression will run after each iteration of the for loop. So for our for loop, a SSIS variable is required. So before we'll configure it, close the container, right click in the gray space in your control flow, and select variables. And you can see I already have a variable created here. Um, I just made it variable called int counter because it's going to be our counter. I made it a integer data type, and right now it just has a value of zero. We'll use our int counter variable here in our initial expression. Um, in our expression, we'll have to use the ampersand symbol to defi define that we're using a variable. So at int counter, if you'll notice I used a capital C here, just like I defined my variable out um, inside the control flow. Um, one, one important thing to remember is that in the SSIS expression language, all of our variables are going to be case sensitive. So. If we had a lowercase c here, we would get an error. So in our initial expression, we're just going to define our counter a value of 1. And for our evaluation expression, we want to keep looping until our int counter is, our, while our int counter is less than 4. So it's going to loop for our initial expression, 1. Um, we're going to increase it by a value of 1 and have it iterate for um, iterations 1, 2, and 3. And our assign expression is how we're going to increase the value of our counter. So we can say add end counter equals 
itself encounter plus one enter okay so now you'll notice that the red X is gone in our container it's configured to loop for three times um, I have a script task here I'll enable it and I in this script task, I created this just for visualization purposes for this demo. It's just going to bring up a message box with the value of our iteration, and I can show you how I did that real quick. You can open the script task. You can see I defined Visual Basic as the language that I'm using, and in our read-only variables, if you hit the ellipsis, you can find all your variables and any variable that you want to read inside your script, like encounter, which we're using here. Um, just has they have to be checked in our select variables window. So click OK, click Edit Script. It's taken a second. Just bear with me here. There we go. I'm just going to hide this window so we can see. 